All right. Good morning. It's working. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Tim. And again, I have my coffee cup, but I still have not yet found my sign it's somewhere in this RV. So trust me, this really is Tim, and this is Coffee with Tim. So grab yourself a cup, and we'll have a little chat today. Uh, update, my location today is inside the RV at Heart of Texas Baptist Camp. Okay, I got that one correct. Um, we've been here for, for a week now, and Heart of Texas Baptist Camp is a, a, a property that's uh, between 160 and 200 acres, which if you can't imagine how big that is, it's pretty darn big. Very, very big. Of which probably a third of that is developed and, and being used. And it's basically, its purpose is to provide uh, facilities for churches and Christian organizations to, to host a camp for kids. Where you can bring in kids for a week or two or whatever it is. They can have uh, up to 500 kids probably at a time here. And they have the facilities for the kids to have a great time and for somebody to put on an awesome camp. And, and But the rest of the year, and that's pretty much from June to the middle of August, is their, is their, their busy season of, of providing these resources. And the rest of the year is a whole bunch of maintenance and repair and, and construction of new things. So we're here outside of peak season. And uh, one thing that is going to be happening this, this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, uh, tomorrow and the next day, they're hosting a uh, fall festival. It's a fundraiser. As you can imagine, their camp season was very, very weak this summer because of COVID. And so financially, it's put a, a real burden on them. So this is their second annual fall festival. And we, uh, my wife and I, and the other sewers that are here, have been mostly preparing... Uh, uh, putting up, we put up a corn maze, which they made out of uh, big sheets of cardboard. Former, they were election material signs from a former candidate for office who donated them. And they got painted black and they got painted uh, cool pictures of corn. So it's a corn maze and we put uh, posts in the ground to, to support the, the panels. And so it's like, uh, uh, it's a corn maze. <laughs> And so the kids run through that. They have a couple of photo op places for the families. One's a big stack of pumpkins and a, a bench and a sign that talks about having both thanks and giving. And another one we just made, this is a new one, is a candy corn. So they cut these pieces of gigantic, ginormous styrofoam blocks into shapes of uh, huge candy corns. And we painted them. And we made uh, stacks that stacked, stacked them up. And there's a bench and a sign. It says Camp Candy Corn. And you can have your picture taken there. They have this really nice zip line tower that's got uh, suspended bridges and things you can walk on with. You take your harness and hook it. And you walk along these crazy different bridges. It's 30 something feet tall. And then you can go all the way up to the zip tower and, and zip take off you're just hanging by your harness i'm not sure i'm ever going to do that i'm not sure it's load rated for me but maybe it is but i do have this fear of heights but that, that would be awesome if you're a kid and so they have that and and they have a, a wagon ride it's a giant old old 1940 something tractor that pulls this beautiful wagon that they made for for people to ride in and it takes them around the property and uh they have uh, a s'mores thing where there's a big open fire and they they they, they sell s'mores kits a s'mores kit is a four cookies the the keyboard cookies that have the chocolate the graham crackers with chocolate already on them and a couple of marshmallows you can go marsh roast your marshmallow and squeeze it between those cookies which already have the chocolate so it's no mess no fuss and much cheaper and the kids can uh, roast other marshmallows for free. And they sell, they're going to have some concession stands with stuff like snow cones and popcorn. And I don't know what all they're going to have. Uh, 
maybe not snow cones, but they could. And uh, there's probably a few other little things that are going on. But so family comes in and they, and they pay five bucks a person and they get a wristband and then they can do any of the activities as long as they want to. You know, they can go through the maze a hundred times. They can ride the zip lines as often as they can. They can do all these different things. It's a fundraiser. But I've seen the money, you know, the things that we have done and they have purchased uh, for the event. So you know, they're probably going to spend a, a quarter of the proceeds just on preparing and maybe more for the, for the event. They expect last year they had about 100 kids, 100 people for each day. That's 200 people. Uh, hopefully there'll be a little bit more because of word of mouth. It's just a beautiful thing, and, and uh, they need the money. So that's what we've been doing this week, preparing for the fundraiser. And then we got a whole list of projects next week to do. So it's, it's good people. They have a, a staff here of a few people. Uh, believers and it's amazing to me how creative everybody here is they all have creative skills whether it's musical or artistic or uh, it's just very 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 creative it makes me feel like i'm a, a block <laughs> yes i'm a block i have no skill but they do and it's amazing to me how god has put people into the place that they fit the best I think of John McKendrick's back home. He's doing what he's called to do, right where he needs to be. And there's people here that are that are skilled and, and, and just perfect for this place. And it's just amazing to me. I hope someday I find my place where I'm just made for this and I fit. Uh, but I have yet to find that. So that's where we're at. And it's uh, we've only been, it's about... Seven, eight miles from the city of Brownwood itself. We're out, out here on a lake. They have a lake and a uh, duck pond. They got the whole thing. If, you're, if you were a kid, my daughter, Chloe, you would not want to watch this. But if you did, I would remind you of a Wana camp that you went to. Because it's just like that, only better. It's got all the buildings, cabins and barracks for kids. It's got the swimming pool. It's got the lake to do stuff in. Uh, there's the zip line, like I said. There's areas for games for kids. There's a ba covered basketball, three covered basketball courts under a big barn-looking thing. It's just all anything you could want to do as a kid is here. And then the spiritual thing. Look at the dining room; it's huge, and they said they could process those 500 kids in, in just about a half an hour. They could feed 500 kids in that amount of time. But they rely on the, on the churches or the, or the organization to, to provide the the teaching and training and, and, the, and the programs and it's mostly just hey we're here to support you do ministry but they have a heart for for people and so it's 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 a beautiful place and we're glad to be here all right so what's going on in y'all i appreciate I, I sent out my text to the homies and i don't know how many of my homies are watching this normal video because the questions i got back on my homie test I was like, you guys have been watching, because you, you would know these things you're asking me about. But uh, it was a great interaction with y'all. It's a great interaction. Uh, I was very pleasantly surprised how excited everybody was to jump on that group text. That was nice. All right. Some things. All right. I'm having difficulty feeling like I, I can continue to do a weekly video blog because um, what it turns out to be most of the time is just an update which is you know if you all need that i'm glad to give that to you here's where we are here's what's going on but the spiritual i don't have a spiritual uh lesson every week i depend on the lord to be teaching me something in my quiet time or my study time or to give me an idea or to spark me so i can give to you what the Lord gives to me. I cannot give what I do not receive. And so I don't want to be out here just a, like a, uh, how did Paul call it? A clanging cymbal and different things, just making noise. I want to speak what the Lord, the Lord has given me something to say, and then I will say it. But right now I'm not having a whole lot of something to say that I feel like is from the Lord. 
so I, I'm, I'm really in the and let's just let's cut this down maybe do it once a, at least once a month because we're going to be changing projects every month and i i would like to at least keep it once a month but i would keep it open to say hey the lord gave me something i want to share that with you and that would be cool so i'm not i'm just feeling like the pressure of doing it every week uh, john doesn't preach every week geneva doesn't preach every week I'm not preaching, but I, if they have a, a lesson, they have to, and the pressure to do it every week would be hard. So uh, it's really cool that there's a team there, and that John is so uh, developmental and willing to share the pulpit. It's wise of him. It reduces burnout. So I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of that that burnout. One thing I have done, which is encouraging to me, is I, I'll go back. I I found an old video, an old copy with Tim or two, and I'll watch it. Something I, you know, it's like three or two or three months old, four months old, and I go, there was some good teaching there. I needed to hear that. I, I taught myself something again. I encouraged myself. So as long as I I have those those moments, you can watch a video and you go, this is where the Holy Spirit took over. I could see it. I can see it. It's good. Uh, I want those times where you, where you can see the Holy Spirit just take over. So th that's just a format change. If I don't post one next week, and if I don't post one any given week, don't assume that I have committed suicide or, or left my wife or denied my faith or something. Because that's probably not true. I hope it's not true. But what it is true is I didn't have something to give that week. And if I don't have something to give, I'd rather keep my mouth shut. Or something. A wise man, a fool, it says a fool, when he holds his tongue, is accounted as wise. And so by speaking when I don't have something to give, I make myself look bad, let alone the Lord. So that's, that's, that's what's on my heart and mind going forward with that. Now, having said that, uh, this has been an interesting experience for me because I've come to the place where I'm finding out I didn't maybe didn't come out here to minister, but to learn. Because I've been learning a lot of stuff about me, about the world, about the church in America, about our country. About myself and my wife about the RV I have been learning a lot of stuff and it might be time for me just to shut my pie hole and learn to listen learn to listen I'm wanting to learn to listen to the Lord more because sometimes you can hear him and you know what's going on and other times it's so quiet I've been reading in uh, Kings, First and Second Kings, the, in the days of the prophets, and O M G, how exciting is that? Or you see God moving, and you have prophets speaking, and, and miracles happening, and you can see God's perspective on on current events at that time. Why is God doing something? What is going on? And you can see it. And you get the commentary. You get a divine... It's like watching the divine news channel. You know, where you get God's commentary on what's happening. And uh, just lots of eye-popping things have, have come to me. But I long for the days of the prophets when God was actually doing things that were accompanied by a word that that validated or explained the reason for or, or you know you see you knew what god was doing and why he was doing it but today we don't have those kinds of prophets for, i've never heard of one that's got that kind of a prophetic ministry telling you what god is doing and why he's doing it and we see the world shifting, and we know we know it's end times. You know, we know God's setting the stage to prepare for the return of Christ. We know this, but the specifics of like here it is, a Friday, and I still don't know 
who controls the Senate, and I still don't know who the president's going to be. And and things are just, uh, fortunately, there hasn't been that much writing yet. And But there's just things that I wish that for the long, for the days of the prophet. I, I long to hear from the Lord in that manner, you know, that the word of the Lord came to. You know, I, I can't wait for the word of the Lord to come to Tim. But in the meantime, I'm being shaped. I am being shaped for a purpose in which I'm not exactly sure what it is. And you are too. God is at work in your life. And I don't know if you're somebody who's found your niche, the place that God has designed you for and fits you in like a plug, or if you're just, what's going on? But don't, my call to you today is don't take your eyes off of the one who rules, the one who cares for you, the one who has designed you. And wherever you're at, don't don't give up. God is at work. And and do not lose hope. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. For his plans for you are for good, for a future, not for evil. But clean your ears out. Clean your ears out. Lord, where's the hard places in my heart that are stopping me from hearing from you? Lord, where is that place of disobedience that prevents you from moving forward in my life? I noticed in the kings, uh, the, especially the kings of Israel, that did the evil that their father did, or that the first Jer Jeroboam did, and they, and they didn't, and even the good kings that did that followed after David, they didn't tear down the high places and they didn't tear down the the bad altars, for the most part. And so, you, what's happening is you don't get rid of sin completely. You have a sin, not you, maybe you do, a sin that hangs on to you that you just don't clean out. You know, you, you come in and you come to Christ and you get cleaned up and you're 90% clean and you, you look pretty good from the outside, but there's still a thing or two things or something that you haven't taken fully care of. And I would encourage you to stop and it hurts. And, and to Rick, I can't even deal with that. I have tried to deal with that and I can't get rid of it. But stop. And put it to death. Deal with it. Whatever it is. So that you're free. So that there's nothing to hold you back. I don't know if this is going up on the web. I'm not sure how this turned out. I'll listen to myself. Uh, it's meant for good for you. It's meant to be an encouragement. But also a challenge. To clean up whatever's remaining. Strengthen that which remains. And finish the job. Don't leave the high places up. Don't don't compromise. Finish the work. We're called to be holy. Uh, and without spot or wrinkle. And what we're doing is sometimes we'll leave a spot. And we'll leave a couple wrinkles. And the Lord will say, no, we need to take care of that. Well, listen. Listen to the Lord. And take care of that. It's kind of what I'm doing a little bit, too. All right, so maybe next week, maybe not, but that's that's my coffee with Tim. I may post a couple, uh, t some pictures of, of the, the grounds here, uh, the corn maze we made, of the zip line, and, and that kind of stuff, just to give you a, a flavor of where we're at. Got some really good people here, small group, but uh, a lot of good camaraderie, a lot of, a lot of good stuff going on here. Uh, love my family, love my, my group at home, I love my sowers, there's more and more sowers on this. So I love you all, and be encouraged in your work that it's not in vain. Your service is not in vain, right? All right. Love everybody. God bless you. Oh, i got to pray. Father God, I'll pray that with, if, if there was any good word in what I had to say, you would apply it right to the heart that needed to hear it. If somebody has a sin that they got to take care of, I pray you'd let them know. That's what I'm talking to you about. If there's somebody in here that's been discouraged, I pray that they would be encouraged, that you're still at work 
If they're still breathing, you're still at work, Lord. And there is a place. And for those of us who haven't found our niche, we haven't found our place where we plug in and fit, Lord, I pray that you would show us that place. What are we made for? And how can we uh, find that place that we can plug in and be fully using our gifts, talents, and abilities, and skills uh, in, in, in a good service environment or building up the church or building up your ministry in some way that we would know this is what I'm made for I'm good at this and this is my place thank you Lord now let's not be stagnant but listen to grow thank you Lord that you love us too much to leave us alone oh, yes so so thank you Lord you're good to me all right, uh, y'all have a good day here, and that, 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 that's all.